I'm Dr. Bandy Lee, forensic and social psychiatrist, president of the World Mental Health Coalition, and convener of the 2017 Yale Conference that led to the New York Times bestseller, The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, 27 Psychiatrists and Mental Health Experts Assess a President. My colleagues and I came forward in unprecedented ways because of the unprecedented dangers that we saw and the critical need for our expertise. But we were also shut down in unprecedented ways because like in all authoritarian times, truth, which empowers the public, had become a threat. And at this silencing, the dangers, we, the dangers could only spread. Uh, and so I tried to illustrate that in my recent book, The Psychology of Trump Contagion, an existential threat to American democracy and all humankind. Now we are trying to rectify this vacuum of relevant expertise in the public through a new book and a major conference event at the National Press Club, which many of you would have received notices of, but I will announce again at the end of this session. In 2022, before the US House of Representatives Select Committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol, Members of militia groups such as the Oath Keepers said, I feel extremely ashamed and embarrassed to have participated in that violent insurrection. Others have said, I'm sorry to the people of this country for threatening the democracy that makes this country so great. Still others said, I am truly sorry for my part and accept full responsibility for my actions. One older participant said, I am ashamed to be for the first time in my 68 years standing before a judge, having pleaded guilty to committing a crime, ashamed to be associated with an attack on the United States Capitol, a symbol of American democracy and greatness that means a great deal to me. Many thus experienced a rude awakening upon being arrested of having been used as pawns, as many of them claim themselves to have been, in Donald Trump's scheme to stay in power through the use of violence despite losing an election. They defended themselves by stating that they were swept up in the moment and that they had drunk the Trump Kool-Aid. Many stated they did, did what they did out of love for my country and had no criminal record, but had work, family and community ties and public or military service even. Few would have done what they did without Donald Trump psychologically conditioning and instigating them to violence for months, if not years ahead of time. In the two months before the day after the November 2020 election uh, and the coup attempt, Trump unleashed a total of 1,718 tweets bombarding with variations of the message that they were trying to steal the election. We will never let them do it. He also instilled during his speech that hundreds of thousands of American patriots do not want to see our election victory stolen by emboldened radical left Democrats and by the fake news media. That is what he said. And then uh, he stated during his speech before the insurrection, we fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Now we are facing such a moment again. Nothing has changed about Donald Trump's psychology in his ability to tolerate another election loss. Not only that, this time the potential for even greater violence exists because his Trump contagion was allowed to spread even further without mitigation through uh, prosecutions, through uh, mental health interventions, or even um, the ability for his legal cases to go forward in his multiple uh, federal violations as well as state violations, most recently hampered by the Supreme Court uh, giving him absolute immunity for presidential acts as they themselves will define. 
So attacking the seat of government, the constitution and the democracy that we experienced almost four years ago is set to move forward in this, again, uh, perilous presidential election cycle. And not only was that violent insurrection a national tragedy, but there were others. Immediately before that great upheaval, there was a COVID pandemic, which unnecessarily claimed the lives of 1.2 million Americans. And this was without going into the culture of violence he instilled in American society by that time, his reignition of a nuclear arms race, his acceleration of the climate crisis, and his dismantling of the world order, generating a level of national and geopolitical instability that has led to much of uh, the instability and uh, overturning of the world order that we are seeing today. All this uh, was effectuated not based on a rational, stable, free-thinking, well-informed consent of the American electorate, but through the spread of his pathology. This was all predictable and pre preventable. This is why I and my colleagues believe that we as mental health experts had a special obligation to warn the public for mental health reasons that Donald Trump posed a public health emergency, perhaps even an existential one. I burst out into the public eye when in 2017, the urgency caused me to organize my conference at Yale School of Medicine and edit the New York Times bestseller, The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, which catapulted us to the number one topic of national conversation within three months. Over 50 members of the U.S. Congress invited me to meet with them. At least a dozen chairs of psychiatry departments from around the country reached out to me with compliments, and senior journalists believed that we had arrived. Indeed, Congress members themselves told us that they themselves depended on our educating the public medically so that they could intervene politically and seemed to believe uh, the possibility was at hand. That was when the American Psychiatric Association intervened aggressively with the New York Times, both largely uh, pharmaceutical industry supported and mental health expertise was permanently removed from public discourse. Now, just yesterday, uh, Robert Reich, uh, the filmmaker and political activist, um, published an article stating why is uh, the media being silent about, about Donald Trump's obvious dementia symptoms. Now we wouldn't necessarily call it all dementia, but we know that dementia is most likely in the mix. And, um, and we know that he is now uh, exhibiting serious mental symptoms that have no possibility other than that he is experiencing a great uh, deterioration in his status of mental health, especially in the face of a very successful launch of the uh, Harris Waltz campaign as juxtaposed against his own, um, uh, his own nomination. And then shortly thereafter, the very unpopular uh, vice presidential pick of J.D. Vance. So um, we are now uh, attempting at this time to organize a major all day dangerous case of Donald Trump conference in Washington DC at this extremely critical time more than ever before in our lifetime. The year before the 2020 election, we held a major conference at the National, Health, National Press Club in Washington, D.C., The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, which was considered important enough that it was broadcast for all three hours on C-SPAN. As never before or since we brought together 13 highly respected experts from many different areas of expertise, including psychiatry, political science, economics, philosophy, fascism, politics, journalism, climate, science, and nuclear weapons. The conference was convened by myself, moderated by Professor Jeffrey Sachs of Columbia, 
and among others included Dr. Gerald Post, the psychiatrist who established the CIA program for psychologically evaluating foreign national leaders, who in one of his final public appearances applied all of his experience and knowledge to warning against Donald Trump. We created a 17 minute video at that time that opened the conference, as well as a 10 minute video of highlights from the conference itself, which were both very popular. Now, this coming September, a little more than a month before the election, we would like to hold a very major conference at what is now an even more critical time and which we can have an even greater impact. This impact is critically important because no matter how successful the the Harris Walls campaign is, without addressing the major mental uh, public mental health crisis that we are facing that has impeded every rational response and every rational attempt at holding Donald Trump and his followers to light of reality for uh, for for the electorate for both the electorate and those who would um, sign on to his campaign in order to advance their political agendas uh, has been successful despite. Uh, the highly successful Biden presidency, which has returned uh, our everyday life to a great deal of uh, normalcy, if not thriving economically up to this point, in terms of reduction of unemployment, control of the COVID-19 pandemic, as much as he could, despite the disaster that the Trump presidency had unleashed. Um, we are still uh, that the presidential campaign should still be uh, competitive at this point is, is extremely worrisome. So to make this uh, significant live event in Washington to alert about the true mental health pandemic that we're, we're experiencing and that has, um, that is poised to uh, influence the presidential campaign in unprecedented ways, uh, we're we're attempting to uh, uh, to organize this event online throughout the country, as well as to get professionals to work with us to prepare it, widely public publicize it, broadcast it live, as well as get C-SPAN once again on board to cover it. Uh, this needs to be a major and newsworthy event, including having members of Congress and major media attending it and covering it. The single theme of the conference will be that Donald Trump absolutely must be kept from entering the Oval Office again, and that the three criminal trials, the January 6th insurrection in D.C., uh, the classified documents in Florida, and the election interference in Georgia must all proceed to conclusion. We will have several uh, announcements to make of our own doing, such as the pre-sentencing report we submitted to uh, the Manhattan District Court uh, under Judge uh, Juan Merkin, uh, which highlights the dangerous risk that Donald Trump brings. Uh, forensic psychiatrists and other psychiatrists often uh, advise on sentencing guidelines um, in such situations. Uh, we will have launched a new book uh, by uh, the original authors of The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, as well as some new authors. And uh, so to make this a major talked about event, this all day conference will open at nine in the morning with short, intense presentations from all of the participants. That opening session will be followed by a buffet lunch for all who attend. Uh, and then there will be a multi-hour afternoon question and answer session discussion with major media and members of Congress also uh, potentially attending in person as well as online. Uh, we're hoping to make up for the dearth and uh, in fact, the absolute blackout of mental health expertise during these uh, almost four years. And then after the conference is concluded, we will uh, we need to have a major publicity campaign so that millions who will know about it and be able to watch key excerpts from it, will, uh, which we'll have quickly edited and made available, uh, can participate.
Immediately after the conference, we will need to have a team of professional video editors to put together an hour summary of the key segments, including key questions asked at the conference, along with a selection of sort of short clips of key conference moments, all ready to be quickly put online and circulated to major media for their use within a day or two of the conference. The, now this conference will only be worth doing if we can reach a vast audience of millions with many persons filling the ballroom at the National Press Club, many watching online and many more in subsequent days watching uh, the videos that we've produced. Uh, we're hopeful that this could happen because of the major issues involved and the major issues that will, in a sense, explode in relation to the conference from, uh, in, in relation to the presidential election because of the way that the 2020 election has unfolded and the violent aftermath of it. Uh, this time, it will only be more uh, perilous and dangerous. And so uh, we have very limited, limited time now to get everything in motion and to make this happen. We've launched a GoFundMe campaign to be able to uh, raise funds, uh, thanks to a gracious volunteer who has helped us set this up, as well as reached out to potential large donors. And in fact, one has uh, responded with a substantial uh, seed money for us to begin. So that's why we're even considering this. So I have repeatedly emphasized that fascism is not a political ideology, but mental pathology and politics. This is our chance to address it as such. And this is an important distinction because unlike normal ideological differences of opinion, or the wide range of variations in style, personality, or culture in which human beings are uh, of uh, which human beings are capable, mental pathology is often incapable of compromise, intolerant of variation, and has the inevitable course of destruction and death. So indeed, experts who distinguish pathology not by ideology but by their own training through its characteristic patterns, such as rigidity, detachment from reality, intolerance of uncertainty, and self-destructiveness, we need once again to speak up and to attempt to educate the public. A disorder at the societal level still has these characteristics, and without intervention, the same course of progression as any other disease, that is destruction and death, uh, will happen at only at much larger scale. So a mental health professional's job is to tell apart that which is healthy decision-making from that which is maladaptive disease, no matter how the afflicted, afflicted group wishes uh, for it to be um, pursued and uh, wishes to claim that it is simply their own political stance or something that would even be good for the public. So healthy decision-making will always be life-affirming, no matter the, the ideology, and disease-driven choices will be death-inducing, no matter how fervently it is espoused. And all the more so with disease, since symptoms come with an irrational compulsive drive, much more than rational persuasion. So uh, because society is one of our primary responsibilities as mental health professionals, in addition to patients, my colleagues and I determined that Donald Trump in the office of the US presidency more than met the standard psychiatric criteria for speaking up, he posed, from the beginning, a threat to public health through violent rhetoric, incitement of others to violence, the emboldening of violent dictators around the world, the attraction and use of dangerous weapons, and the laying down of a culture of violence. Most importantly, there is the modern version of the 2,500 year old Hippocratic Oath that we honor which has been modernized into the Declaration of Geneva, which overrides any guild rule, such as the American Psychiatric Association's Goldwater Rule. 
which applies only to 6% of licensed mental health professionals anyway. The Declaration of Geneva is a universal pledge taken by every health professional in the world since 1948, and it was instituted for the first time in response to the Nuremberg trials. It clarified that the humanitarian goals of medicine are incompatible with either silence or active cooperation with a destructive regime. And instead, it emphasized that the primary, uh, that the primacy of patients and populations well-being, uh, humanity, autonomy, dignity, and non-discrimination against any external pressures of, or authoritarian influences on top of confidentiality came first. So to elevate a Public figures' privileges, even in the absence of confidentiality, since there is no patient-provider relationship, above even the safety and survival of populations, would therefore be diametrically opposite to these principles of medicine and directly favor authoritarianism. This is what the media must recognize and stop their blackout of mental health experts, the most relevant experts of this time, in an attempt to um, avoid any ethical uh, breaches, which of which there are none. So, uh, so in other words, uh, mental health professionals' standard duty to warn and to protect patients and society um, apply in this situation. And uh, we know, of course, the inevitable course of pathology of which we need to uh, warn the public. And so the American Psychiatric Association's tragic choice, which is arguably worse than that of the German Psychiatric Association under Nazi Germany, needs to be exposed for the mask of corruption that it is, so that mental health experts can offer their final warning to the, to the American public. So currently we're coming out of a successful launch of uh, our our plans to hold a major all day conference at the National Press Club and to uh, to publish a short book with the original as well as new mental health experts uh, in the publication of the dangerous case uh, or the much more dangerous case of Donald Trump. Uh, 37 psychiatrists and mental health experts warn anew. So uh, we will start our uh, discussion today with questions. Uh, potential questions might be, um, will Donald Trump be able to withstand real challenges from the Harris-Waltz campaign? How dangerous will he become if he does not get his way? Um, as well as uh, any other potential questions that you will bring up. So I will now open it to the floor. 